In the hot seat this week, National Party Forestry spokesperson Joseph Mooney. I asked him what his first post-cyclone move would have been had he been Forestry Minister instead of Stuart Nash. We actually have to go back a little step and say, uh, what haven't we done yet? And the, the problem is um, the Labor government hasn't actually acted urgently, urgently on recommendations they received back in 2020. Um, for example, slash traps. Uh, there were recommendations about how to improve the regulatory environment for those. Councils could consent those better. There was also recommendations um, around actually including uh, slash management, specifically in forest harvesting plans. OK, so what's the first thing that you'd do? What's the most urgent thing that you would do were you Stuart Nash? Uh, I would ensure that we change the regulations around har uh, harvest management plans to ensure that slash management is specifically required in those uh, harvest plans. This is an issue that has been around for decades. Can you point to something that National did when David Carter was Forestry Minister that actually improved the situation? No, quite frankly I can't <laughs> because um, uh, look, I, I've, I, took, I took this job on actually the same day the Prime Minister So this resigned. is on your shoulders as well? Well, this is, this is a long-standing issue and look, um, I suppose the but if, we, if we step back, this is, we talk, we're talking in the East Coast about the most erodible soils, or some of the most erodible soils in the world, uh, platinum decisions that were made 30 odd years ago. Um, however, um, there was a review uh, um, after the 2018 Tolaga Bay flooding and slash event, um, un, uh, following community pressure to do something about it. Uh, recommendations came back in 2020. Those recommendations have still not been acted on, and I don't think that's good enough. And for people on the ground right now, regulatory changes will take time. What's one action that you could take that could help with the cleanup immediately? It's actually making sure that the um, forestry companies are out there doing it. And look, to be fair, uh, so this is and, on and, them. And, they should and, be going in there and doing it. I think I, I think I think it's really important they they are, and that, and, and to give them credit, um, I've been up the east coast actually following Cyclone Hail and Cyclone Gabriel. And they have been pouring their resources into the clean up. So, so that is, that's a good thing. So they're doing enough? They are doing a lot. Um, um, with it, we need to step back and think, actually, how do we prevent this slash coming downstream? I think we need to have balanced conversation. It's not just slash, it's also forested debris. It's other woody debris from poplar, willow. Um, but you know, obviously forestry slash is a really big component. Okay. And, and how, how do we stop that happening? There, there were recommendations made in 2020 to Labor government. They have not acted on those recommendations to date, which I don't think is good enough because that uh, 2020 report also warned them uh, that there was going to be increased frequency of extreme weather events and the risk of uh, the damage from forestry slash coming down the street. And the, later that same year, the Labor government declared a climate emergency. They have not acted urgently. Uh, so I don't think that's good enough. Either. Should harsher penalties be instituted for forestry companies which don't follow existing regulation? Well, those actually already exist on our RMA, um, and a number of forestry companies were prosecuted previously. But should they be harsher? Well, because it clearly isn't changing much behaviour. We do think the um, the penalty regime should be looked at and uh, look at increasing those penalties. To where? Well, currently the maximum penalty is six hundred thousand um, dollars. I'm not going to set in stone what that should be, but it, it, there should be a clear signal that if it should be higher, though, it should be higher. But there is an economic component here because forestry represents about one point six percent of GDP. This is tens of thousands of jobs. Correct. How do you balance putting in these regulations without hurting the families which do depend on this industry? The forestry is New Zealand's third biggest export sector, so it's really, really important to New Zealand. And uh, and but we we need to make sure we've got good standards in place that make it really clear for both councils um, who monitor and ensure um, compliance as well as consent uh, forestry activities and the forestry companies make it really clear what is required from them um, so that we can ensure we're not hurting people you know, downstream, we're not taking out infrastructure, we're not damaging other land users and, and setting slashing up on beaches. Is it possible to introduce stricter regulation without hurting the industry's bottom line? It seems like we can't have it both ways. Just make it really clear that you have to have a plan for slash management as part of any harvesting plan. Like that, that's a, it's just a, a simple fix that can be done. It's not, it, you know, to be fair, it won't be simple to always make deliver on that because we're dealing with very steep terrain, uh, dealing with you know forests that were planted uh, 30 years ago before we had an awareness of some of these uh, extreme weather events. But look, um, there's that. There's also these uh, slash traps, which you know we can stop. Um, this wood coming downstream if it gets in the waterways. But we want to stop it getting in the waterways, but at this stage I think it's really important we actually stop it if it does get there because you now we're dealing with long-standing um, practices that have been going on for some time. Would you commit to being bound by the results of the inquiry? They've given eight weeks for this inquiry. 
We're one week into it. We don't yet know who's going to be consulting. So, no, you wouldn't be... Well, I, I need more information. Um, I, and I think, the, I think the whole community needs more information. We're already one week into it. There's only seven weeks to go. We still don't know who's going to be consulted on it. All right, that sounds like a no. Uh, final question. Is this the portfolio that you're going to be gunning for uh, if National is lucky enough to take the next election? Oh, look, I think this is an, an awesome portfolio. Like, it has um, a huge amount of opportunities. Obviously, it has a lot of challenges as well. But this uh, forestry is a, is a key part of the New Zealand economy, and I'm um, excited to be uh, the spokesperson for it.